Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-1265. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures Site-1265, which contains SCP-1265, is to be publicly maintained as a wildlife preserve by the Safe and Clean Planet Initiative, a Foundation Front Company. Scientific discoveries made by the Foundation regarding wildlife within SCP-1265 may be published following corresponding evidence being found in the fossil record. Civilians wishing to travel through SCP-1265 are to be treated with Class D and Terrigrade and Selective Amnestics in order to be unable to remember instances of SCP-1265-A that they come into contact with. All untreated civilians found to have come into contact with SCP-1265-A instances are to be treated with Class A Retrograde or General Amnestics, implanted with false memories, and released. Every six months, eggs laid by instances of SCP-1265-A are to be harvested for incubation and study before being released into the wild at maturity. Full procedures for care of young specimens of SCP-1265-A including in printing procedures, see document 1265-1. Description SCP-1265 is an irregularly shaped area of land measuring 50 kilometers within the Congo Basin, Africa. SCP-1265 is mostly contained within the Democratic Republic of the Congo, but approximately 15 kilometers is contained within the neighboring Republic of the Congo. The majority of SCP-1265 is uninhabited, save for some tribal villages, and contains flora typical of the Congo Basin. SCP-1265 is inhabited by several species known to be extinct, mostly from the clad Dinosauria. These animals, collectively designated as SCP-1265-A, appear spontaneously in groups of five approximately once every 30 days, and are not necessarily found on the fossil record within Africa. Instead, they appear to be selected based on the climate they lived in during the Mesozoic era. Instances of SCP-1265-A are incapable of leaving SCP-1265, as they dematerialize upon crossing the border of SCP-1265, and reappear in an area 3 kilometers of the border, sedated. SCP-1265-A are also not chosen based on one particular period of the Mesozoic but the Cretaceous and Jurassic are the most well represented, with sparse population of Triassic period dinosaurs. In addition, several non-dinosaur reptilians such as pterosaurs are known to exist within SCP-1265 but are not commonly seen. SCP-1265-A instances, even carnivores, show no aggression or fear towards humans unless provoked. To date, the three Foundation personnel killed in SCP-1265 have died as a result of accidentally provoking a 1265-A instance, as opposed to being actively hunted by a carnivorous species of SCP-1265-A. Notably, there are few large carnivorous or herbivorous dinosaurs present as SCP-1265-A instances, and a lack of dinosaur species whose fossils have been found in North America. For example, Species such as Tyrannosaurus rex and Brachiosaurus have never been sighted in SCP-1265, but species such as Spinosaurus and Kentrosaurus are relatively common. Proportionally speaking, there is a 5 to 1 ratio of non-American dinosaurs to American species. Finally, there are several instances of SCP-1265-A that have not yet been discovered in the fossil record, collectively known as SCP-1265-Alpha. SCP-1265-Alpha instances are known for being unusually aggressive, and will often charge at or attempt to attack researchers and other animals within SCP-1265 indiscriminately. As of yet, Foundation researchers have been unable to determine the origin of most instances of SCP-1265-Alpha. Some have been found on the fossil record, and as such have been reclassified as instances of SCP-1265-A. Notably, SCP-1265-Alpha instances reclassified as SCP-1265-A usually lose all aggressive tendencies. 
SCP-1265 is believed to have existed for at least 200 years, according to historical records. Several instances of SCP-1265-A have been integrated into the folklore of several tribes in the area near SCP-1265. For further details, see Interview 1265-1. Interview 1265-1 An interview conducted by Dr. Wells in a Mboshi village 5.5 kilometers away from the perimeter of SCP-1265 regarding SCP-1265-A sightings. All dialogue has been translated by acid from the Lingala language. Playing log, now. What can you tell me about these monsters? There are several of them in the jungle, almost all of them in the water. They do not eat people, though, not most of them, except for the Ngumabu Nene. Ngumabu Nene is like a big snake with legs, walks on all fours like a dog, has a big ridge on its back, and will eat you if it catches you. Tell me about Mokele. Mokele Mbembe is the largest of them all. It is big enough to block rivers and makes the lakes rise. It can breathe underwater, but it is not a fish, and the earth shakes when it walks. There is also the Bilu in Bilu in Bilu, the beast with planks in its back. Are these Mokele and the Bilu? Yes and no. No? These do not have feathers. Everything else is right, but Mbilo has feathers. So does Mukele. They are almost like birds in that way, but they do not fly. The ones that do fly have no feathers. What else can you tell me about the area? It is hexed. The Mukeles and the Mbilos and others cannot leave it without vanishing, nor can their eggs or meat. Years ago, hunters tried to bring back the carcass of a Mokele. It took the whole village, and when they reached the edge of the area, it simply vanished. How many people have gone into the area over the past several years? Many. They are hunters, but they do not want to kill. They wanted to find Mokele and nothing else. They never succeed, for whatever reason. It is because they do not look in that one area for Mukele. We tell them it is dangerous, and it is. All people know that that area is dangerous, and not to go near it. That will be all. Thank you for your cooperation. Note. Administration of amnestics was deemed unnecessary due to the familiarity the majority of the village had with SCP-1265. Collected notes regarding SCP-1265-A. Notes taken during a monthly expedition through SCP-1265 by Dr. Neal. I still find it fascinating that almost all instances of SCP-1265-A, well, the dinosaurs at least, are feathered, not scaled. All I have to say is this. Chen, eat your heart out. This blows Yishin out of the water. Wangs came across a few carcasses, and he's joked a few times about wanting to see what they taste like. I don't trust dinosaur meat, especially given what was found at that farm in China. There are some trilobites in the water, however, and the natives sometimes come here to fish for them. They taste like prawns. As noted in the main description, the majority of them are from the clad dinosauria and are all suited to fit the climate of the Congo. Several of them are quasi-amphibious, such as the Kentrosaurus, which prefers to spend time in water. Observation has shown that it can hold its breath for up to an hour at a time. As such, Kentrosaurus native to this area have large amounts of algae growing on their plates and spikes, occasionally giving the illusion that they are a living bush of some sort. Kentrosaurus are also quite docile but we've seen that their thagomizers can take down small trees. Despite the theory created by Mr. Russell in the 1980s, there is absolutely no evidence that Trodon would have ever evolved into the so-called dinosauroid, but are rather intelligent. They have been seen using rudimentary tools in a manner similar to chimpanzees in order to pick fruit from trees and throw rocks at prey in order to injure it. 
We found a family of baryonyx today. As it turns out, they're semi-aquatic, and use their tails to shoot through the water after fish, and chomp them up like a crocodile or gryles. They appear to be associating with a clan of Spinosaurus. Dr. Moore was very disappointed about seeing a live Spinosaurus, and I honestly can't blame him. They're mostly quadrupedal, and have feather covering more like ducks than anything else. Their skeletal structure is completely unsuited for walking upright, and the less said about the so-called spine, the better. Scientifically fascinating, but as a lifelong dinosaur enthusiast, I must grieve for such a titan. We've made an incredible discovery. A four-winged flying dinosaur, with wings on both its arms and legs. Wang speculates that it's a completely new species of Microraptor, native to Asia. It's colored like a raven. Its plumage is an iridescent black. Since it's not been found in the record, it's an alpha instance. And those things are tetchy. Wang nearly got his finger bitten off sedating it. If it's ever found in the fossil record, we'll name it properly. But for now, it's just Microraptor Foundationi. <laughs> we finally found something that isn't feathered. It's a species of crocodile, Postosicus, late Triassic. It was drinking at the edge of a lake, when suddenly a pack of Colophysis jumped out and attacked it. Several of them went for its throat, cutting the jugular. As soon as it bled out, they began stripping the corpse to the bone. It was astounding, almost like a piranha tearing apart a cow in the Amazon. We managed to collect the skeleton, and Wang noticed that the thing had three shattered ankles as if they'd fallen or landed on their feet. Probably why the Colophysis were able to take it down so easily. We saw a magnificent fight between Therizinosaurus and a Carnotaurus. The Therizinosaurus practically decapitated the poor carnivore, which was about the same size. The Therizinosaur then did something rather odd. It cut open the Carnotaurus corpse and dipped its claws in the blood, before scoring the trees around it with dinosaur blood. I believe that this was done for the purpose of marking territory. It's actually rather fascinating, if somewhat gruesome. The Therizinosaur then ate a bit of flesh from the Carnotaur and left the area. Dr. Moore had apparently never seen a Dilophosaurus outside of a certain movie. He was absolutely shocked when he saw one, and it wasn't a 2 meter long creature that acted like a dog, but rather a 6 meter long creature that looked like it could bite off his head. It ran away, but... We managed to get some good pictures. Also found some footprints from an unknown sauropod. I honestly have no idea what on earth we saw today. We found a new instance of SCP-1265 Alpha. It appeared to be a ceratopsid, with a single horn and four short stumpy legs, but it had a long tail dragging along the ground. Uncharacteristic of ceratopsids, and it didn't have a frill of any sort. Instead, it almost seemed to have floppy ears near the top of its head. It was also quite aggressive, and was engaged in combat with a Pachyrhinosaurus for unknown reasons. It ended up goring the poor thing. We decided to head back to the site after that. I like dinosaurs just as much as the next guy, but going to the Congo? Nah. I'll stick to Steven Spielberg, thanks. Anyway. I think that about does it for today. Thank you all for listening, if indeed you still are, and you are all dismissed. Goodbye. I would like to give a special thank you to Albino Neku, James Saba, Andre Bichert, Jax Merrick, Pablo Ice 917, Burlington the Cat, all the Time Gaming, Justin Day, Researcher Bulvier, Pierce M. Hamlin, Curie Kuma, White Crew, Nicholas James Vujak, Bryson Bailey, My Archive Curator Nick, Cody Tench, The Android, Slump God, Quartz 563, and Tree Hero. Thank you all so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, 
visit patreon.com forward slash the Vulgan. Thank you.